Life Audio. Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also on our website. Again, our website is dailybiblepodcast.net. It is not too late to start. Ever. Join us. Ever. Yes. We want you to join us. Yes, we're here to be your two leaders. Okay, so today we are reading Job 35, 36, and 37. Okay, here we are in Job (laughs) still. All right, in Job 35, Elihu reminds Job of God's justice. But this is not a gentle reminder at all. Um, The New Living Translation says in chapter 35, verse 16, but you are talking nonsense, Job. You have spoken like a fool. I mean, I, I've never had a friend speak to me like that. I can't imagine. That's oh, strong so, words. Yes. And while the meaning is correct in this passage, um, the translation, it, if you actually go back and look, it switches from the second person you, um, such as if you sin, how does that affect God, to actually switching to third person. So it's as if Elihu is talking about Job, even though he's talking to Job. So in the Hebrew Bible, um, Hebrew scholar Robert Outler wrote a more poetic form of this, and it would be something like, and Job, with mere breath, he opens his mouth, devoid of knowledge, he heaps up harsh words, Hmm. Uh, or he heaps up words. And that is just, that's just harsh. Mm -hmm. And that switch from the second person to third person is similar to someone like talking about me, even though I'm there. So it would be something like, do you think readers need more books when millions of ideas have already been written? And Trisha, writing 80 books, (laughs) keeping up piles of literature that no one should miss. It's almost like, you know, a slap in the face when someone's talking and uses Mm -hmm. your name talking about you, even when they're there. I mean, you're there. Mm -hmm. So really, Elihu, this young guy, is not holding back any punches. In mm-hmm. Job 36, Elihu says he's defending God. He also believes no one has gotten it right in their arguments. And in Job 36, 4, Elihu says, I am telling you nothing but the truth, for I am a man of great knowledge. A more direct translation is one perfect in knowledge is with you. I mean, can you imagine someone sitting there, you're having lunch and they're like, one perfect with knowledge is is with you. I would just be like, uh, you're you're a little full of yourself, but that's how he was speaking. Um, And yet a storm was brewing. In Job 37, Elihu is no doubt using a lot of weather references or metaphors because it seems to be there's actually a storm brewing about them. Um, And we know this to be true because, spoiler alert, tomorrow God speaks to Job from the whirlwind or the storm. So he's speaking Mm. about all these weather things. And then the next chapter, which we'll read tomorrow, actually says God speaks from the storm. So the storm was raging around them as Elihu is saying all these things. I'm just trying to picture that. These men are sitting there. There's actually like this huge storm in Arkansas where I live. There's huge storms. And this was going on as Elihu is speaking to his friend Job. I just, I think of, of the storm and the storm, you know, with lightning strikes Mm -hmm. and wind starting and everything goes dark and it's almost in some ways a metaphor for what's happening to Job is what it feels like. Because as I've said, probably in the last couple of weeks that we've been in Job, this has been a journey for me Mm -hmm. and this has been hard and I don't mean to complain. That's not what I'm trying to get at, but I'm trying to say there's got to be others out there. There's got to be someone listening. Who's like, this is just as hard for me. Um, But as I'm struggling with reading Job, as I said, a few days ago, Job really gives the sufferer a voice. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I was so on par. I even said this yesterday. I was so on par because up until like, 
up until yesterday because we were slowly seeing Job come out of this dark, dark veil. We were slowly mm-hmm. seeing Job look up. And, and, and just as I was reading today, I started almost recoiling into myself because I feel like Elihu took some of that voice away from mm-hmm. Job. At least I feel like if a friend had done this to me, I'd be like, oh, you mean I can't share honestly with God anymore? I, I, I can't, I can't just like share what's really, truly on my heart is, is honesty where I want to be with God is honesty where I want to be with others. There's, there's just, it seems like there's a difference between spewing of words and words shared carefully. Right. Um, and I think Job did both. And and I don't want to discredit Elihu. I think he did both also. But again, I think we were talking about, about Elihu's tone. Mm-hmm. And just what does that tone look like? And that is so hard yes. to read tone when we're reading text. We're not hearing a play going on. And even if we were to see a play going on, it's interpretation at, right. at someone's interpretation. And so it's just, I, I just sat there today, like I said, just really struggling because I was like, okay, Job gives me a voice for when I'm hurting really bad. And now Elihu comes in and I'm like, oh, I almost feel like I would just sort of become a shell. Like right. I would just be a protect, I would back away and I'd be like, oh, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Yeah. And I think that's what, that's what's so amazing about God's word and these passages. Is it stirs emotion in us mm-hmm. because we've been feeling like this is a dark place and I just want someone to understand me. And then we see this friend supposing to be there that's just like you are doing it all wrong I mean it's just it's so hard but the fact that it stirs emotion the fact that thankfully God is going to be giving some input soon I think that really helps us um so even though today's reading is hard we have hope because in in the upcoming chapters God's speaking and there's some beautiful things there and so I think it is hard and it's stirring these emotions of questions and um, worries and feeling like, oh, I don't know what I should say. But thankfully, we have hope that it's going to come out of these chapters. So it's been hard, but it's going to be ending in a yeah. brighter note, thankfully. Yeah. Well, it's time for a quick break and a word from our sponsor. And then we'll be back with the word of the day. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives. And so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity. Hey everybody, I'm Dale. And I'm Tamara. We're hosts of the Kainos Project podcast. Where we help you tackle ancient Christian truths in everyday settings. To learn more and subscribe, go to lifeaudio.com. You know, before we get to the word of the day, um, we talk about our Facebook community and we've asked in there, you know, what are some things that you've gone through that God's really shown up and just mm. helped you in? And there was another Michelle that gave this comment and she said, I'll, I'll keep this short, but several years ago, her brother battled and died of cancer and he was 54. And then a couple months later, her mother-in-law passed away. Then a couple months later, her mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer and died mm. four weeks later all in six months time. And my heart is just aching thinking of that. And then she said, my husband was forced out of the company that he was in for 17 years and they moved. And she said, Mm -hmm. to say that was a year full of suffering is an understatement. And she said, I found myself in a very dark place for a long time. Everything became impossible for marriage, parenting, friendships, and ministry. Um, And she felt like she wasn't hearing from God and that she was desperate And she says, I spent many days wondering if God would rescue me Mm. and how. And then she said, well, I read about a blessing jar and thought it would be good for my family, never considering that God would use it to transform my heart. Mm. I was determined to come up with something each day to see as a blessing. 
The early weeks were hard, but as time went on, I began to see the blessings. And then I couldn't keep up with all that God was doing. (laughs) Recording God's hand in our lives got my focus off of me and my suffering and gave me the Mm. right perspective. From there, I could begin to heal. The journey has been long, but who would have thought that God could use a simple jar and some sticky notes over the course of a year to pull me out Mm. of such a dark place? And she said, but God. And I have Mm. goosebumps right now thinking about Mm -hmm. that, knowing that, I mean, in six months time, losing those family members and a job and moving, I mean, my heart aches, but by her writing those blessings down just one mm-hmm. each day, it he started to heal her and it grew her relationship with God. And I, I thank you, Michelle, um, for, for sharing that in our yeah. group. And I think that is such an encouragement to me. Well, and, and I, I see Michelle's word of the day, or I see the word of the day in Michelle's story yeah. because it is an incredible story. It's a job like story. It, it really is a job like story. Yes. Um, so, the word of the day is messy. And I see in a storm, as we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. the storm is building. There is messiness in a storm. Yeah. And and there's the storm of emotions, like the storm of four friends, five friends now talking. It, there's just, in Job, there's just, there is a messiness. Human emotions are messy. Relationships with others are messy. Unfortunately, I wish that were not so, but I don't think that that God would teach us if it was right. not. I don't think we would learn about certain things if it was not. You know, questions are messy. There are times when someone's hurting or times when, I don't know, no one's hurting, but I'm like, should I ask that question? Maybe that question's going to, you know, um, cause an uproar or, you know, also pain is messy. And there are not easy answers to anything. Yet, even even in the mess, we grow. Mm -hmm. We grow in trust in God. We grow in God in our relationship and our knowledge of him. We may not ever understand the pain or the losses. And we may never get an answer here on earth. But somehow in the mess, we can trust God that he loves us completely. And we are seeing that in Job. Even in the mess we can trust God completely. Yeah. And I have to say, and I think I texted this to you, but it, I've spent like three hours going over these passages because a long time. I'm like questioning. I mean, he's supposed to be giving good advice and it's causing so much pain and he's so prideful. I really struggled with all of that and thinking through it. And what, after I kept going over and over it, Elihu said many things about God's power and glory, but his main point was this, that questioning God's justice is off limits. Mm. So even though Elihu was really harsh, he was right. Um, The moment we start thinking God is wrong, we are wrong. Like anytime. And so Job was doing that. He's like, why did you do that? I mean, he was saying, I wish I wasn't born. Why did you do this? So he, he did question job, uh, question. uh, Job did question God, but Mm -hmm. As soon as Elihu started pointing this out, it just seemed, it seemed harsh to me, but he got his point across. And in the previous chapters, um, when Job was saying, uh, Job 36, 22 says, look, God is all powerful. Who is a teacher like him? No one can tell him what to do or say to him, you have it wrong. Um, mm-hmm. And so God, Job was demanding God to explain himself and maybe it's just me but Elihu's pride must have been like salt in Job's wounds and stinging him but Job did go too far he demanded an answer from God and so again maybe this is cheating by reading ahead but (laughs) God rebukes the first three friends but he doesn't rebuke Elihu so can we call this righteous anger? I don't know. That's something that I'm kind of working through. And perhaps being nice isn't always the right way to go. So I started thinking about this again. And I really started thinking about times when I had to be firm, but mm-hmm. I was sharing the truth. So we had, um, you know, we adopted seven kids and some of them we adopted as teenagers. And one of them really, really would speak just very harsh to me. 
Mm-hmm. Um, she would uh, just, she knew how to push my buttons and just, you know, wound my heart by um, saying, you know, you, you are just adopting us to get attention and you don't really love us and you're a horrible person. I mean, speaking stuff that was just like stab wounds to my heart. And I would just try to like, turn the other cheek and pretend that her words don't hurt me while I would then go into my room and cry. And it was just so hurtful. But I noticed like me being nice and being meek wasn't helping because she would just continue to do it. So I remember one day as she was lashing out at me, I told her the truth in a firm but shaking voice because I was emotional. And I said, you know, you are being abusive. You are not hitting me, but your words are like punches Mm -hmm. to my heart and I won't take it. Like you cannot do this again. You you just have to stop. And she kept continuing just spewing hurtful words. And so I started recording her with my cell phone. Um, And because, you know, later she would always calm down and then she would be nice and pretend like it never happened. But my heart is still wounded. And so I ended up sending her that video and saying, I know you don't know what this looks like. So this is what it looks like when you speak to me that way. And it crushes me and your, your words are like fists. And would you please have more self-control? And I could tell that she watched the video. And afterwards, she admitted that, that I was right, that she didn't want to abuse me with her words anymore because she'd been abused mm-hmm. um, you know, by her biological family. And even though that was harsh, like you need to stop you cannot talk to me this way. I recorded her. I sent it to her. It actually was the thing that made her realize what she was doing was wrong. And I think that goes back to Elihu. He was harsh, but Job was questioning God. And as we dive into this messy, um, you know, hopefully we will see that, that we can be in the messy and we could talk with our friends. There's, you know, Job's four friends and Job and these conversations But hopefully we won't question God. We won't continue to harden our heart or push him away because we think this isn't fair. Um, And so I love how our friend Michelle brought this blessing jar in Mm -hmm. to remind her of God's goodness. So even though Elihu did seem very harsh and very um, in Job's face, his main point was you shouldn't question God was right on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm just thinking through your word of the day and through what you shared, Trisha, and I'm just realizing that we see messy throughout all circumstances in our life. Mm -hmm. Right now, I am working through very little sleep and I'm packing up a house because I'm going to be moving and I've moved almost every two years for the last teen, last 18 years of my life. And I'm like, you would think that I would have packing <laughs> down to a science, yeah. but packing is always messy mm-hmm. and it's exhausting. And you pack a box and there's more mess to clean up. I, I, I called Joe the other day and I was like, I've packed three boxes out of my bathroom and it looks like a hurricane happened and I've still got another box to go. And then I pick, packed up another box and I was like, it's even worse than before. <laughs> yeah. And, and then it's just packing is messy and exhausting. And then in life, like even in life this morning, because I'm working off of so little sleep, um, Joe called me and my mind isn't in the right frame. So I was ex- distracted when he was talking to me this morning. And I know I wasn't listening. Like I should have been listening. Like we talked about yesterday. Yes. And, and so then I, um, just, just let's put all of that off to the side. Let's compartmentalize just what I've said and, um, turn the corner. I was listening to a podcast the other day while I was packing and it was about organization and bringing order to your life. Mm -hmm. And when, when there's order and when there's cleanliness, it brings us peace. Right. And that's true in our relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a relationship in my, in my life right now that is, is very messy and it's caused a a level of suffering and it's a sibling relationship and it needs healing. And I can't go into all of it because just, I can't go into all of it, but we are dealing with two different worldviews. I'm a Christian. They are not. I see things one way, they see things another Things got so messy at one point that I had to block them on my phone and basically cut off communication with them. 
And I have wrestled through that messiness and where I need to be because it's been a couple of years. And, um, and I was told a few months ago that in order to heal, heal that relationship with that person, we would need a mediator. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's messy. And I know that I've done things wrong. I've said things that are, are wrong, or maybe I said things in a tone, even though it was right. Maybe I said things in a tone Mm. that was very hurtful. Yeah. And, and so, uh, I know that God will restore and I know that. And so I pray that, and I ask for direction, but you know, this has caused a disruption in my life. Mm Mm-hmm. And then now, now let's, let's go back to what we compartmentalized. Um, I learned this morning that I need to do a better job of listening to my fiance or at least explaining, Hey, there's a messiness in my life right now. And I am so sorry Mm -hmm. that I was distracted when I was listening to you. I need peace in my relationship with him, you know, and, and there will be peace when I get my house all packed up and when it's all unpacked and on the other side next week it will be peace but we need we need order and we need cleanliness in our in our physical mm-hmm. and also in our relationships yeah but one thing i wonder just as we're talking about this i'm wondering if elihu had a different tone than what we're thinking he had mm. i i just i wonder if if his tone is is we're reading one way and I'm just wondering if he was a little, maybe he was softer. I don't know. I really don't know. I can't say that, but maybe he was like, pay attention to this Job. Just, just listen to me here, you know, stop and consider. I'm just stop and consider the miracles of God. If, if that's what he was saying, if he was pushing it that way, you know, another actor uh, to the story that we really haven't talked about. She's only talked about in that, in that first chapter or the first two chapters, our first day in Job was, was Job's wife. Yeah. And we all seem to cast her aside in that messy relationship side and say, "Eh, that's Job's wife, because she said, she said, curse God and die. That's what we all say. But in talking with Job and talking, or in talking with Joe and talking through Job with him, he said, what if she actually was, was saying this in a different tone? And she was saying, curse God and die. Kind of like mm. what Job was saying of God, it, there's so much that we've lost. So much that we've lost. Like, uh, I am in so much pain here. Mm-hmm. And so I don't, I don't know if, 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 if even in this messy is what we're experiencing right now. If, if we're misinterpreting some things, I, I, it's just a question of mine. And maybe we're not misinterpreting it, but it's just a question of mine is that in the messy, maybe we don't see things as clear as we need to see. I know that in my own life, mm-hmm. but in the messy, are we, are we really seeing what those friends, um, especially Elihu was saying, um, you know, I go back to the the poetry of how Job is really written as as poetry. So what is he saying and how is he saying it? I guess that's that's where I'm pondering. Yeah, that's so good. And sometimes what may come off as harsh is really the thing that's going to get like Job's attention in this case or my daughter, me recording her with my phone and sending it to her and say, look at this, look at what you look like, look at what your face looks like. Look at the words that are coming out of your mouth. I mean, that's pretty harsh when Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be a loving, caring mom, you know, that understands the drama. Uh, But it did give her a wake up call Mm -hmm. to realize. And so maybe Elihu's words gave Job the wake up call because, as we're going to see, God said some pretty firm things, too, Mm -hmm. to Job. Um, so, oh, so many, it is messy. I mean, (laughs) I can't think of a better word. Um, but I'm just going to pray right now for us in all of our messiness that we can hear from God. So Mm. dear heavenly father, we come to you, Lord. And 
ah, there's messy things in my life. There's messy things and hard things in Michelle's life. And we know that the listeners out there, there's messy in relationships, in transitions, in job changes, in challenges with children, whatever it is, Lord. But I pray that we may look to you even in our messy and um, that we won't say, God, how could you allow this? But say, God, this is happening and I need you right now. I need Mm -hmm. you. Um, Instead of accusing God, seeking his help and his strength, even in our our broken places, Lord, I pray that each of us will turn to you no matter the messy, knowing that you are the only one that can bring that order and that peace and that cleanliness that our hearts need today. And we just turn to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, links to that Bible is in our show notes. You can find it in the Kindle format, and also you can listen on version. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of Bible reading that we are following. So tomorrow's reading, we are going to finish Job. Can you believe it, Trisha? <sighs> wait, wait. No, 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 no. Uh, no, we're not finishing Job. We're two days away from finishing Job. But we get to hear from God. We do. We hear <laughs> from God. <laughs> so we're going to read Job 38, 39, and the first part of, of Job 41 through 5. Hey, I just want to take a second to thank the team at Life Audio. You wouldn't be listening to the Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. They are great partners. Thank you so much, Life Audio. You can go to lifeaudio.com and you'll find other great podcasts to encourage you in your walk with God. They've got shows on prayer, on Bible study, parenting, and so much more. Go to lifeaudio.com and check them out. And have a great day and be back here tomorrow to hear from God and Job. No, I guess it's just God, isn't it? God's talking tomorrow. (laughs) See you then. Bye-bye. Surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing. Help save lives. And so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your generosity.